Hello everyone! Hi. This is Constance from Mysterious Galaxy and I'm excited because I'm slightly biased and I think YA fantasy is kind of the most amazing thing in the world. I mean, you know, mild bias, but it's also true. So tonight I am very excited because we have a Meili Wen Zhao and she is going to be in conversation with... Now, Sarah, I'm so sorry. I should have asked beforehand your last name to correctly pronounce. It's Rash. Rash. Okay. Let's see. Rash. So yay. And we are celebrating Red Tigress. You have to say that title with some attitude, I feel like. Um, it is book two in the Blood Air series. So yay, I'm not going to give you any spoilers because if you hadn't read book one, I'm not going to ruin book one. But essentially to tell you all of the amazing things that we have, you have a princess with a secret power of awesomeness. <laughs> That's how we're gonna describe it. And <laughs> you have a um you have a gentleman not of the most gentleman. noble it or ethical um <laughs> you may say I love this. <laughs> the opposite of a gentleman. You might even call him a crime lord, but you know what? He's what our princess has. And um, in book two, of course, we're dealing with the fallouts of things that happened in book one, but there is the necessity to take back the throne and all of the perils and dealing with a country where there's not necessarily a lot of allies for our, for our princess, but but like we said, she's got that uh, <clears throat> gentleman to help her <laughs> way through. <laughs> but on that amazing summary note, um, just know that this is an awesome, awesome YA fantasy with all of the dark good feels in it. And I am going to go ahead and pass it off to Sarah. But before I do, you guys all know we have the routine of our house rules. To the right hand side is our lovely conversation where I can see you guys giving all of the love. I'm not gonna brag, but I'm totally gonna brag. We have the best audience and you guys give so much love to our authors, so thank you so much. If you have questions, make sure you ask them. It's why events are so much fun. So make sure you click that ask a question button down below. They are at your mercy. Though I always read the questions and make sure that they're nice. But ask all <laughs> the questions that you have. And then most importantly, the best way to celebrate a new book out in this world is to indeed purchase said book. And if you would like to purchase this book, yes, this is where we all get to do the point down below. There's a beautiful green button that says buy books. And if you click that, it will take you to a page that has all of our authors' amazing and awesome books. And on that note now, Sarah, take it away and I will see you guys at the end of the event. Goodbye. Thank yes, you. thank you so much for the introduction. I'm going to refer to Ransom, Ransom the whole night as a gentleman. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I like an hour <laughs> the gentleman. So, <laughs> oh, really? It's just two books out. <laughs> How are you? How are things? Good. It's been, Good. this is like my second, I'm like literally one book away from a debut, so I don't have much to compare it to, but hey, like spending the day in pajamas on social media has been fine. <laughs> pajamas, official outfit of release day. Oh yeah. When, when did Blood Air come out? I was trying to remember when. It was uh, November 2019. Okay. So, so at like, least you got kind of a more normal release <laughs> with that one. Yeah. Yeah, this is an interesting time to interesting. <laughs> I know. I like I literally just beat the pandemic. I think it was like four yeah. months and then we went into lockdown. So I was like, yay, I got to celebrate in person and that was it. <laughs> yeah, at least you got the, got the I mean this is it's memorable at least. And we got to <laughs> see people we wouldn't otherwise see. So it's nice in certain ways, but I was gonna ask my first question was how was this different from book one? <laughs> Very different from book one. <laughs> Very. So I was actually I was working during book one, which like really made all the debut nerves like much, much better. Cause when you have like angry clients from banks screaming at you, you know, it's hard to focus on like a YA fantasy. So I was like, this is good. Like <laughs> I'm just gonna like zoom home and go to my lunch and everything will be fine <laughs> your rage fuels me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so did you have your launch for blood air at mysterious galaxy 
Or were, were you there? Did, did you have your launch for Blood Air at the same bookstore? Um, no, it was in New York. So I'm in uh, California right now. And then um, we went in person and it was a bookstore called Shakespeare and Co. That was literally like two blocks from my apartment. And it was so great. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> Reminisce too much about in-person events. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, so now that book two is out and you've had the experience of book one to compound it, what are you most hoping that readers will take away from book two? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I think book one, so Blutter starts out with like, oh, there's this princess, she's exiled and she's trying to regain the throne and save her family. And then Red Tigress is like, nope. We're gonna, <laughs> We're gonna question everything about the monarchy and like government systems and like structures of power. And I think this book mostly is about sacrifice. So it's about learning to choose between you know, what your heart wants and what you think that your goal is or what Anna thinks her goal is, poor girl, um, <laughs> versus what is better for the greater good. So there's a lot of like questioning as to like, you know, the, there's a rebel group without spoilers. And they're, I know, right? like, to explain. <laughs> they're right. like, like, no to the monarchy, you know, no author authoritarian regimes. Um, and Anna's just like, oh my God, like my whole life I've been indoctrinated with the idea that this was a great like system and, you know, it's a benevolent ruler and now not so sure anymore. So I think, yeah, sacrifice and choosing what's better for the greater good would be the main themes, as well as more romance, more angst. <laughs> yes. Yes, I won't spoil anything, but the romance. <laughs> we finally get the, the, okay, I won't spoil, it's so hard to talk about. I know, I was realizing. Talk. It's like, I always say things, but I don't want to say things. Oh my gosh. No, but okay, I will talk about the um, mention, Luke Buckaround, you talked about turning the systems on their heads. And that's what I loved mo so much about Red Tigress is that you really have Anna confront a lot of her um, preconceived notions of things. And I think that's a really good um, commentary on current gen the current generation of teens who are watching the established governments just kind of crash and burn and having to question, like, is this really the best system of things? why was I told that it was kind of in question what they believe. Um, so it was really interesting to go on that journey with Anna and see how it paralleled things <laughs> going on. Yeah. And from the safety of a fictional world, of course. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so all these questions, try not to spoil. What's your favorite scene to write in book two? <laughs> my favorite scene. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, <laughs> this is actually one that's not exactly in the book, but I sent out a oh, book. Oh, I think I saw you post about this one. Yeah. And so it was originally in the draft and it's called Midnight Swim. And it occurs when Anna and Ramson are traveling to Bragan and they go for a swim. And my editor was like, oh, you know, we need to up the pacing, up the tension, stakes, you know, let's, let's get the ball rolling. And then we need to cut this. And I was like, okay. But I was like, this is, this is my favorite scene and I'm still gonna sneak in here <laughs> with the bonus scene. So I think that was one, but actually in the book, probably the ending. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's something like my favorite parts of endings are probably like something bittersweet. Something something similar to what you did to us here, which <laughs> I, I don't know if I can forgive you, but I was just like, that's it. <laughs> but something that is back at the end of Red Tigress. <laughs> okay. yeah. Bittersweet endings are my favorite. You um, mean like the end end or like the climax battle end? The end end. Like, end, end. Yeah, the climax was really fun, but like, and like people are like, oh, like I love your action scenes, like they're so fast paced, but I'm just like, I don't like writing action. I love the angst, like give me all the romance. <laughs> what? You love the angst? <laughs> Never would have guessed. <laughs> Especially in this book. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Took, so I should have marked the page when that scene finally happened. It was like three quarters of the way through the book when the angst finally resolved i guess <laughs> and then ended it more in angst and then it was more angst you can't let them be happy and maybe <laughs> let them be happy <sighs> <laughs> 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 
Um, so you mentioned that the Midnight Swim takes place on their way from Anna's country and they're going outside of the empire. Um, I really liked that you opened the world up because I'm a huge sucker for world building and getting to see more of these interesting places. Um, so what was your favorite, what has been your favorite place to write? And another tack on question, will we get to see other countries in book three? Oh, I love this question. Um, so yes, we will see three kingdoms or empires in the Blood Air trilogy. Um, and each book kind of takes us to a new one that is very much related to one of the POV characters. So in the first book, obviously it starts out in Cerulea. And in the second book, we go, not a, really a spoiler, but to Bragan. Um, and that was so much fun to write because like, I love how you write politics, by the way, like this book and Snow Like Ashes, literally all the kingdoms, like it was so fully fleshed. And then I was just like, I am just a sucker for world building too. But I think just exploring the different political systems because really it is a monarchy, dictatorship, monarchy. <laughs> Bragan is a constitutional monarchy with like, like it's it's modeled off United Kingdom, like Britain, right? Um, and there's a king and like a cabinet and everything. So just looking at how like the social hierarchy of Athenites or like the people with power um, worked in that kingdom was amazing. Um, and just like kind of how the lore of Athenites and all the gods happened in Bregan and how they call like they call the gods gods in Bregan but the deities in Cerulea and like mm -hmm. all that was so much fun to write and in book three no spoilers but we go to another new empire so so much oh you can't tell us which one I think I know but I don't want to I think you would know <laughs> but it's related to one of the POV characters okay then yeah yeah <laughs> that's exciting that's the one I hoped to go to because <laughs> That character deserves the happiness too. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> there's so many things I want to yell at you for. <laughs> so just people go read the book and then you can yell at Amelia on Twitter and Instagram. No. Yes, no. yes, you deserve to be yelled at for the things you do to these poor people. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna ask this question without spoiling it. There is a character in in Red Tigress, um, a female character that we meet in Bregan. Ah! And I don't want to like give away who she is really, but she's such an interesting force in this book. And she's psychotic, but she became my like favorite character just because she was so drastically different from like, from on her <laughs> And I think people are really gonna like not, love her they're not all going to be twisted like i am but they're gonna be <laughs> like to I be. Am. <laughs> so what was your inspiration for writing her and for having this just, just because she was so different from the other characters we've seen that were very like masked and political and like never gave anything away and her motivations were all like right up in your face like she was not afraid to be like this is how it is and i'm gonna stab you if you were to say otherwise <laughs> A little step. I am so glad you loved her because I think she was one of my favorite, like, chaotic things to throw in there. And, like, it just, like, amped up the spice because everyone is so rational. They're like, oh, like, let's form an alliance. And then she's just like, no. Exactly how it was. Oh, my God. But this character is, and a hint to the audience, it she comes from. One of the main characters passed. I think a lot of my readers have already guessed because I like to mm. talk about it <laughs> on Instagram. But she, I honestly do not know where the inspiration came from. And a lot of people ask me, like, how did you write Blood Air? Because it's like such a dark and like bloody and like, like scary kind of book. And they meet me and they're like, oh, like you wear a lot of pink and <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> they're like, how did you come up with this? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I would think, but add a drop of blood in there and it's <laughs> um, so I, I honestly cannot think I think I just like took the most chaotic like things I could imagine and just like imbued it in her. And on a deeper level, this character is 
kind of a mirror image of what Anna could have become mm -hmm. um, because they were raised under such similar circumstances and each was told that they were a monster um, with their affinities. And so this girl, she, I think it's feminism gone wrong because she mm. is literally held prisoner by so many men in her life. And she's like, you know what? I wasn't raised with the love that Anna was and I just want to murder everyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I think Anna sees her, um, in the very end, there's a moment where they're fighting and she's like, oh, like, I could have so easily been her. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't want to fight her. And she's a product of a tragic circumstance. But it really goes back to saying, like, love is something that really saves you and anchors you. And, like, our choices really define which path we walk. So that's true. That is definitely the biggest difference between Anna and this. this character, Michelle, her main unnamed, is that Anna <laughs> had a family who at least loved her in their own ways, even if they did it a little incorrectly, but she also had that support system and this other character did not. Because um, mm -hmm. when I first read her, I was instantly pictured Azula from Avatar. Oh my God, I love, that is, oh my God, I love that. I, I watch Avatar, The Last Airbender, that is 10 something years ago. And like, I have gold goldfish memory. So like, I don't remember except like, Fire, air, earth. <laughs> um, but like people after Butter came out, people were like, "Oh, did you draw inspiration with like the blood bending from Avatar?" And I was oh, like, yeah. oh, "There's no blood in it." And they're like, "No, no, no, there is." Like, go watch this episode. Oh, and I was like, oh. "So now I call it blood bending, and it's amazing." Oh my gosh, I, I totally didn't make that connection either. Yeah, Whoa. amazing. Oh, it's it's in your subconscious <laughs> then, because that muscle is popping up, and I know. Oh. It'd yeah. be an interesting study. <laughs> pieces. It's crazy the things that pop up in your psyche when you're writing and you're like, I, I came up with that all on my own. And then somebody later is like, oh, no, that's. <laughs> no, shh. <laughs> well, coming off the psychotic character discussion, which character do you most relate to in a red tie? I love the psychotic character discussion. I'd love to stay there. <laughs> we, can, we can keep talking about her. I love it. Um, character. Okay. Uh, not a spoiler, but Lynn. And I think people have said, like, oh, you write her so well. I think, like, she seems to come from your heart. And I'm like, yes, like, I relate to her so much because she's literally, like, East Asian, like, pseudo-Chinese. Um, and, like, she, she's not, like, like, the typical, like, strong and stubborn and, like, you know, snarky female protagonist, like, you know, Anna or what, whatever you have. But um, she's... She's very much like my culture, I guess, where it's you you have more emphasis on traditions and customs. Um, and it's like she's like softer but strong in her silent way. And mm -hmm. she's super kick ass, which is what I wish I had, but I don't. But I was just like, you know what, let's write this and I'm just gonna pretend this is me. <laughs> She does have amazing powers, I think. <laughs> yeah, now the question of all the powers in your world, which one would you most want to have? Oh my gosh, I love this. Oh, okay, like, if, okay, if I were living in this world. Oh yeah, that's not good. Okay, yeah, so if you were living in our world, which of the powers from your book world would you want to have? I would, uh, that's so hard, because I can't just like go up and start like, you know, using my blood affinity, because I would just be <laughs> in jail forever. Um, Which I think you'd probably just freak people out, because what they're going to throw you like, If there's maybe something about electricity, which doesn't show up in this book yet, but like something about, like, that would be helpful with electronics, right? Like, mm -hmm. I could turn on my computer like this. Or yeah, like, charge it, keep it charged forever. And like, my AC, like, <laughs> energy, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> Keep that going. So if you were in the world of blood air, then what power would you want to have? The best one. Probably blood. It's, it's really? <laughs> it worked out so well for Anna. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Anna just needs a big hug, like honestly. <laughs> you give it to her. I feel like I have more faith in myself. Like, you know, like the whole book is like Ram Ramson's like, no, Anna. And she's like, yes. Yes, Anna. <laughs> That's exactly how it is. Like, what would you do if you were in the world of blood air? You know, and after everything she's been through, like, 
it's a wonder she turned out as well as she did really like going back to she would have been a lot worse off the poor thing <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> all right well you mentioned lynn and her your culture and maybe we'll get to see more of that later on um but obviously from Blood Air, the big focus was on a very Russian inspired empire. So where did that initial spark come from? Yeah, that was like a culmination of so many factors. So I started writing this when after I took a trip to Russia um, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I've always like grown up learning history and like politics. I, I went to an international school and it's just like, this is all really fascinated me, um, mm -hmm. meeting people from different walks of life and backgrounds. So I read about like the whole, like, I was going to say the Mikhailov dynasty, the Romanov dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is so fascinating because Russia it has some ties to like my home country, China. And like, it was interesting to see, you know, the revolution, like the historical upheaval and how it just went from like such a great empire to like what it is today. And I was just like, this is so fascinating. And I would love to like write something about this. Um, <clears throat> and coupled with the fact that I grew up loving the Fox um, animated movie, Anastasia. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my gosh, no. <gasps> oh, she's, she was in a toy box for a really long time. So she's all kind of. She's, she's been watching it. Wait, where did you get her? I, so my mom gave me a bunch of like my old toys and stuff in a tub and she was just buried in with all my stuff and I'd forgotten I had her. So I saved her and put her on my bookshelf. Oh my gosh. I should totally get it to me. Oh, I'm going to right, start pulling all my Anastasia paraphernalia. Oh my no way. I'm so jealous. Oh my god. I how much stuff I have. Oh my god. I like never had any of these growing up because like I would watch all these American films from China and be like, oh like, where are the toys for this? And my mom's like, I don't know, go to America. And I was Seriously. Like, oh, they're all here. So many things. So I always wanted like the actual music box because they made like the real like like not gold, but a metal one from the movie. Oh my god! But all we could afford was the plastic one, so I was like, oh, settle with that. Kind of the I don't remember what we were talking about. Random <laughs> tangent. <I'm here. laughs> yes, because okay. So yeah, so we liked Russia for you liked Russia for the because you went there and the Fox Anastasia, which I feel like that was a formative movie for so many millennials. I don't I'm know. Sure. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so yeah, so we'll try not to spoil anything else, but I have another twofold question. Do you know how the whole trilogy is going to end? Like, are you to that point yet? I where are you at? Mostly no. I mean, you know how publication schedules work. Like you write books like five years in advance. Um, so I'm currently revising uh the third book. And I I think I know what I think I know how it's gonna end, basically, like the huge structure. Um, but no spoilers. But I I think like the me whole message of Blood Air is to give hope. Um, mm -hmm. And to like say, you know, this world isn't perfect, but we're gonna fight for the good parts of it, and that's worth continuing to fight for. So I think, I think readers will love the ending, and I think. <laughs> so will it be a happy ending? Hmm. <laughs> I will say yes, but I also don't trust you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hope for yes. <laughs> When you started writing Blood Air, did you know how you wanted the trilogy to end? Oh my gosh, I, I did not. All I knew was that like I had more to write. Um, and then like I like when we were on sub, I'm sure that you did the same thing, but we wrote like these outlines for mm -hmm. books two and three. And then my agent was like, oh, can you get it to me like over this weekend? And I was like, Sure. sure. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> and I kind of made it up like over one weekend and obviously most of it has changed. Um but yeah. Yeah, I I remember doing that for Snow Like Ashes and but the summary for the third book is like things happen. A and big battle. <laughs> the magic battle and somebody survives probably to I don't know. So yeah, it is <laughs> 
and that's just how different authors work. Like some people start out with that very like, this is how it's going to be. And I can see the whole trilogy and then. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely a plotter, but like, I'm like open to like new forms of inspiration along the way, yeah. like going off the road with a map and you can get back on if you get lost, but like, like you can wander. Um, and actually the ending for the third book, I just kind of re revised it a little bit and I'm really, really happy with it um, and added some details. And it kind of just came to me like as I was looking over notes and revising and I was like, wait, like this makes perfect, perfect sense. And, and exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All the vagueness, we'll understand it someday. Um, so you don't know when, but book three maybe next year, maybe. Yeah, it should be. Um, it should be a year from now, um, ish. We'll see exactly. what happens with the pandemic, but around yeah. then, yeah, we'll see. What even will next twenty twenty two be like? I know. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> All right. Um, looking beyond twenty twenty two, if it's possible, do you know what you're going to do next? Are you going to stay in YA fantasy? Do you have plans to branch out? What's going on? Yeah, so I am. Def I love Y fantasy. Like it was such a formative. It was the way I learned um, or improved my English um, when I was reading these books back in China, and it's just so formative to me. Like I remember picking up um, Throne of Glass and like uh, the Mortal Instruments and Infernal Devices, and I was like, oh my gosh, like these worlds are so amazing. Um, I hope I can make something like this one day. And yeah, I just think <clears throat> Y fantasy. There's such a broad range, especially mm. like in these few years, like you can go from very young to like older, um, which I think what uh, Blood Air is. Um, mm. I, yeah, I'm super excited to keep exploring it. I've just submitted something to my agent and I am super in love with it. Um, <laughs> so fingers crossed, but yeah, for sure, why fantasy? That's exciting. It's so exciting to actually love what you're working on too. Cause I know like, especially coming off of a big trilogy, like it's exhausting. I <laughs> know. Nice you still have that like excitement about a project. I know. Oh my gosh. How is working on Snow Like Ashes trilogy for you? Because I remember I was working full time, launching Blood Air, revising book two and writing book three. And I, I, it was not a pleasant experience for a while. A lot, yeah. And I don't know if you've done this to yourself yet, but after I did I still like the Ashes trilogy, I was like, never again am I doing a series. They're all gonna be standalones. No, that didn't work. Like everything else kind of still like it's two books now, so I've gotten it shorter, but it still was a series. So have you gotten to that point where you're like, never again? Honestly, <laughs> I was, I literally had a point when I was writing the second book or the third book, one of them, and I was just like, why? like why i i just oh why did i do this to myself <laughs> um but now that now that that's you know past amelie's job and present amelie's kind of like basking in it and i'm just like okay like things worked out well like oh, you can, like childbirth you forget how terrible it was <laughs> your brain blocks the horrible parts I, one of my biggest fears like after like after I finished this I was just like okay I'm I'm never gonna read this again so one of my biggest fears actually during my read along on Instagram that I let recently mm -hmm. I wrote something and then a few of my readers messaged me and they're like oh actually like you you wrote this and that's that's not true and I was like I literally forgot what I wrote in my own book oh and you know, like, that happens um, so much or you'll forget a character name and they'll be like that's not who that was like, do you look up characters' eye colors, or do you? Oh my god! That's the worst. <laughs> I try to have like a, like an Excel spreadsheet of like facial descriptions and body descriptions, so I don't like mess it up. But there's still that's things. Not, that's such a Virgo thing to do. Great Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> Are you a Virgo too? No, I'm a Cancer, so oh. I'm not, not as ordinary. But I need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Come over to the Virgo side with spreadsheets and everything's planned and beautiful. We still mess things up because that's just what happens. There's oh so many God. people, <laughs> too many characters, especially in a fantasy. Like you get so many details that just I know. get away from you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think Ramson's hair is something that I royally. I saw this debate going on. I know. So, like, this is totally me, like, coming in and, like, just like not knowing the nuances of, like, the shadings and stuff. And then I was just like, oh, like, 
I'm gonna do um, like darkish, like brownish, but with a slight golden like um, hue to it. And then I looked up and it was like, oh, sandy hair. Okay, like that looks good. Like, and then people started coming out with him as blonde. And I was like, wait, what? And then my sister was like, yeah, sand is yellow. And then I was like, but wet sand is brown. And she's like, <laughs> I was like, why would you pick a wet sand? That why? <laughs> so now he's like this weird in between, and it's just like you know what, like whatever you want, like whatever. <laughs> just imagine it, you know. Wet sand. Oh, <laughs> that's the best description. For a, very hair. Hair. <laughs> a wet sand hair gentleman. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. Okay, let's take some questions now. <laughs> Or, oh are, are we supposed to click on these? Um, yeah, I can just read them off if you'd like. So the, the top voted question is, how are you so fabulous, Amelia? <laughs> Who is Rebecca, this? Hi, Becca. <laughs> hi, Becca. Hi, <laughs> Becca. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Look at the hair flow. Um, I know, hair flow. Uh, thank you. Oh, my gosh. I have, this is the only prop that I've had in this quarantine home for months, but Oh, thank you. There you go. That's perfect. Why yeah. haven't you been wearing that the whole time? Yeah, it doesn't fit in my head, and it's it like oh, okay. But thank you. Well, still, <laughs> it fits you. It fits you, and it kind of fits the style of like Russian Empire. The big. I know. Yeah, I got this just to take pictures, and then um, when yeah. I flew, so I flew to this. Uh, this is my fiance's family home, and I flew here literally in March two days before the lockdown. And I've been here ever since for a whole year. <laughs> and this is literally the only thing that I brought with me. <laughs> it's literally in all my pictures now. <laughs> it's lovely and it fits the aesthetics. So you know what? The gram is happy. <laughs> the gram. <laughs> all right, the next question is also from Becca. Oh my gosh. If Anna had to fight, oh, where'd it go? If Anna had to fight 10 duck-sized horses or 10 <laughs> horse-sized ducks, which fight is she choosing? And how is Ransom going to manage to make everything worse? <laughs> okay, well, let me repeat that. If Anna had to fight 10 duck-sized horses, so 10 tiny okay. horses, <clears throat> and 10 horse-sized ducks, or 10 giant ducks, which one would she choose and how is Ransom going to make it worse? <laughs> Man. Okay, amazing. I'm very scared of water, so I'm gonna go with the horses, the the duck, the duck-sized horses, the tiny horses. Okay, the tiny horses. Yeah, <laughs> and they're smaller. Um, and Ramson's, you know that song, like the TikTok meme that was like, um, what's poppin'? Don't mind me, just watching. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah, I think he would think she would totally have it because the tiny horses. I mean, <laughs> totally bend bend the blood. Not as any blood bending. She totally <laughs> manipulate the blood. <laughs> now you're gonna have to write this this scene <laughs> in my next book as the bonus. Like a bonus. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, what are you working on right now? But we kind of touched on that, that you're doing mm -hmm. okay. and mysterious other things. Ooh, okay. In a fight between Anna and Ransom, who would have been, who would win and why would it be Anna? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, I think it was Becca who said this first, but she was like, you gotta give Ransom credit. Like he's literally, he has zero powers and he literally has Anna this blood ass knight and Lynn this like Camarin assassin wind sailor and he's just there like running after them and trying his best like give him some credit and like, yeah 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 but you know yeah Anna would literally just like throw him um across the room like she, did she has in blood air <laughs> times yeah <laughs> no, less of that in here less of that but um yeah he would totally win and he would probably let her Let's say I think he would just let her win. Like it wouldn't even, he wouldn't even try. <laughs> Such a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> right, what was the hardest part of the book to write, and how did you get through it? Um. Oh my gosh. All of honestly, all of Red Tigers. Like, I don't know if Ice Like Fire was really hard for you to write. Like everyone was like, "Yeah, the sophomore book. It's like when you've like I took 
Blotter took me like five years to write from 2014 onwards. And they were like, yeah, write this in five months. And, you know, while you're working on book one and also like thinking about book three. Um, and it was just like, yeah, the sophomore novel, they're not kidding when it's like mm -hmm. really hard. So I think, yeah, I think getting that into shape was was difficult. So probably the whole book. The whole book. But you know what? I'm going to say there was no sophomore slump with this one. Like it totally mm -hmm. delivered. I think I might actually like it more than Blood Air. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That's saying something. <laughs> <laughs> Blood Air a lot. <laughs> All right. What was the creation of the cover art like? Oh, this, this is like, I'm curious if you, how much input like you get. Cause I, I know it varies between authors, um, but with Blood Air, it started out with Blood Air and then my um, editor, she sent me a few comps over and I was like, oh, like, I love, I love this direction. And then literally, and then she's like, okay, we'll just make some final t uh, changes and we'll send it to you. And then I think it was like two weeks later, they sent me, I was in line at work for lunch and they sent me a totally new, but gorgeous cover art. And they're like, here's the final product. And it was, it was just totally, it was a different artist, like different direction, totally different. And I was just like, oh my God, like this is, this is not the final touch. <laughs> like, I, I freaking love it. Like she is so yeah. angry and so like, angry. So well. And like now she has that little, a little bit of a rams and smirk in this one um yes oh man i yes. noticed the smirk yeah. yeah and then yeah i actually got to like give a lot of input like i wanted the flames and like the little the uh Bregonian castle and the cerulean palace um oh my gosh, yes. so lovely of them yeah that's so i love the little easter egg you get in covers like that especially fantasy covers we get the little pal ah so yeah. awesome have you seen, it's probably too early in the process to, for book three's cover. Have you seen that or comps or anything like I've that? I've seen comps, yeah. And I, oh my, I, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. That's exciting. I'm excited to see, that's the, always the big moment too, seeing all of them together and how they all look. I know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, their covers were freaking gorgeous. And I wish I had them here, but they're just like, I yeah. think so are totally my thing. And also your titles, I was like, this is why I love the series. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really lucked out with the cover artist and the design and everything. That was like the first draft they had, or the first um, vision they had. It was never anything different. It was just always, it always just worked. And it was. Very do, do you like give input for those, or like they just here you go? Not first the snow I got to the series. Um, okay, I was still pretty new and everything, and I didn't really have any kind of grounding in graphic design. Um, before, um, actually, the sequel to These Rebel Waves, <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. It was my idea to have it like crashing on the beach. Oh, um, I'm very smug about that because it ended up looking really nice next to the first one. So I know. I don't know. Yeah, cover design is always kind of sometimes like design knows exactly what they're going to do and they just mm -hmm. run with it. Sometimes they're kind of open to suggestions. So it just depends. Has to be. Yeah. <clears throat> If Anna and Ransom were magically turned into puppies, what breeds would they be and who would be fluffier? Oh my god, oh my god. I love this question. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, I think Anna would be like the the dog in uh the beauty what is it? Lady and Tramp, the Disney movie. Oh, what breed of dog is that? I don't that? know. She just like she just looks very princessy and her name is Lady. Yeah. Um, something like that, but maybe, maybe with some more bite. Um, Ramson might just be, yeah, you know what? I'll just, let's just go with Lady and the Tramp. Like, that is so fitting. The homeless, the homeless, dog. homeless shaggy dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I love it. That totally fits them. And somebody now needs to do fan art of all that Ramson. <laughs> I'm dead. Oh my gosh. Cocker Spaniel. Thank oh, you. Cocker Spaniel. Oh, yeah. Yes. I was going to say Beagle. That wasn't right. Okay. <laughs> Cocker Spaniel and a mutt. <laughs> Someone's like, I see it. I can't. New head. <laughs> We're going to be able to unsee that now. <laughs> All right. Um, would you ever write middle grade or adult? Absolutely. I think, I think adult comes a little bit easier for me um, because I think, I think blood air is a little older YA um, in tone and like, just like broadening and reading adult. I've been, I read like across all genres and 
adult is just like the world building is just so gorgeous i i just love it um and it's it's so intricate too like i recently finished um the city of brass uh mm -hmm. books and oh my god it's just so lush and gorgeous um so i think adult definitely love it middle grade's tone is hard to get right i think like like i've been reading so much and just like the humor is it's just like some something about it just cracks me up so yeah i mean i love middle grade and definitely would give it a shot but yeah um, yeah lots it, of it may be a big deter or I know, no like, <laughs> angsty and chaotic. There and is a lot of like, there's some angsty middle grade though. I feel like you can get some like angsty dark middle grade now. That's, actually, I'm gonna call out Becca and she's gonna hate me, but I I've read one of her projects and <laughs> angsty dark middle grade. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what she did, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> call it out, people. <laughs> Uh, right. what's something from your books that readers resonate with or react to that surprises you? Ooh, this is a good question. Um, I would say not super surprised, but I think my favorite moments were when um, these readers messaged me and they were like, thank you so much for writing May and writing Lynn because actually mm -hmm. someone was like, I, um, share a name with may and in my language it means something and i've just never seen it on the page um and i i'm so grateful to see someone who looks like me um and with my name on the page so i think i think those reactions and seeing people who are like um oh i love lynn because she is so she's like quiet but she's strong in her own way and she's fierce so thank you for representing like the quieter heroines on the page like i think those are my favorite um reactions or among my favorite reactions um, yeah yeah it's really nice knowing that readers are touched by the characters as much as yeah. the characters touch you that's <laughs> weird but yeah <laughs> Um, any hints or spoilers for a new your new series after Blood Air or your new projects? Um, like the, I was connected well with book three, with the world we see in book three. And I think, okay, so going back off a tangent, but I have let my passport to China expired two months into lockdown. I was literally coming, I was literally came to California and I was like, I'm gonna renew it once I get back to New York. And I just never, like my, the Chinese embassy shut down. So like, oh, I feel like I've poured all my like homesickness um, and like just missing my culture and like the food um, and the beautiful places um, into this new project. So I, I hope it shows. Oh, um, and, yeah, super, super love it. Oh, that, that makes me more excited to read it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I was gonna actually ask this question too. Uh, what have you read recently? What would you recommend? Oh my gosh, I I've been reading so many. Mm -hmm. Okay, recently I finished um, A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Cameron, mm -hmm. and it was a deadline week and I stayed up until 5 a.m. to read it because just she writes tensing, tension and pacing so well. And I just, I felt mm -hmm. like I had to know what happened. So that was an amazing read. Um, and also for middle grade, I read Amari and the Knight Brothers recently and it was so oh. adorable. It's, it's so good. It's so good. Um, yeah. yeah. I've heard really good things about both of those. Yeah, especially yeah. Amari. That was fairly recent. Yeah, so. it, it just came out, I think in, January or February, yeah. um, and it's about a, um, it's written by B.B. Allison, and it's about a young black girl who discovers that she has access to her missing brother's secret magical job, and she goes on an adventure, and it's like in the vein of like Artemis Fowl, and, mm. and the links are being put up. Yes, I, I, yes. Loved it. I adored it. Yes, excellent books. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss any questions, but let me see. <laughs> Which of your characters could you beat in a fight? <laughs> oh my gosh. I I wish I could be <laughs> Anna and Lynn. Um honestly like the way I think my fiance is watching them here, but I think like I draw some inspiration from our dynamic. I'm always just like, shut up, go away. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I think probably Lynn, because she's just like 
she's not like head on like sometimes kind of silly slash stupid like Anna, <laughs> but she has like technique and like she's good with daggers and I would love to if I I'd like to think if I trained in like martial arts I I could totally fight like her. <laughs> oh okay okay. I was thinking like I was picturing you fighting Lynn like now. And I was thinking, like, <laughs> okay. Oh, in one second. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what books are you looking forward to this year? Um, any 2021 releases, debuts that you're like super pumped for? Oh my God, so many. I, these books, all, these questions always get me because I'm like, I write them all down and I can't like think of Oh yeah, your mind goes blank. I'm sorry. I hate, I hate when they, I ask these questions too, so I shouldn't ask them. <laughs> I know. Um, but one of them is uh, my friend Katie's um, Young Adult Dark Academic. Ac Academia, Academia. It's called How We Fall Apart, and it's about all these high achieving Asians in a school, in a boarding school, or in a school that um, kill each other over grades. And I'm super excited to dive into that after this week. Um, but also another one is two others actually. Um, Skin of the Sea by Natasha mm -hmm. Bowen. It, the cover was just revealed, and it's about a mermaid who. Um, who saves souls from the middle passage i want to say i have to reread the synopsis but i've been waiting for this book ever since i saw it pitched um on twitter uh and i'm super excited for that one as well um this book called beasts of prey by my friend ayana gray um which comes out from penguin from penguin um i believe and it's about these two uh teens who get lot who like go on a journey in a jungle and it, it's magical it's magical absolutely yeah those all sound awesome i've seen them bad about twitter and they sound really good yeah so i think let me see what are the questions oh okay here's an interesting one this one's from mysterious mysterious galaxy have you written any stories in i would say mandarin Mandarin, yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mandarin, or would you want to translate these books, or have they been translated? Oh my gosh, no, I I have not written anything in any stories. Actually, no, you know what? I have written one story in Mandarin. It was in high school, and it was this like contemporary um, YA. I would say I don't. I had no idea about age categories back then, but it was mm -hmm. just about like. <clears throat> these kids who were graduating and I can't even remember, but that was the only Mandarin story I wrote. And then I started writing uh, in English. Um, but I would love, I would die to see my books translated into Mandarin. So my family can read them. Cause like when I send it back to them, like my dad, my parents can read English, um, but m everyone else is just like, Oh, like pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love that. Um, well, I see a lot of, why English YA books getting translated into Mandarin. Mandarin, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the, the laws there are really different um, yeah. in China, especially. So yeah, I, I think that's a, a big reason why. Yeah. Yeah. Just essentially international markets are always really strange to see what books are mm -hmm. successful. In yeah. Sphere, so. yeah, it's it's interesting. Um yeah, okay, then we think we I think we got through most of the Yay. questions. Sure. Is there still have a couple minutes left? So Wait, I see. Hold on. I see someone's like, Clara, are we going to get more romance <gasps> of Ash and Maddox? Because I need it. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The sequel to Set Fire to the Gods comes out in August, um, and it's just the two books, so that will end the story and everything wraps and the up. The cover just dropped. The cover just dropped. Yeah. It's super it's excited. Weird. We're very excited for it. I love it. Where do covers come out? Yeah, yeah, a lot of covers were dropping lately. Well, okay. You can say goodbye. We're going to have a special guest close the event out with me. So everyone, Ghost and I want to say thank you very, very much for joining us tonight. And Amelie, I'm so happy that we got to celebrate Red Tigers with you. It's just I love your books. I love just the voice that you bring to the YA genre. And it's just amazing having you. 
and we were so so happy we got to and sarah you have been on our shelves for many many years so it's really great getting to also have you and celebrate you Thanks. my shirt oh yeah i'm sorry i read the comments yes my shirt um dinosaurs went extinct because they uh, oh gosh at this point <laughs> 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 but focusing focusing back on to the important things and these amazing new books that are out in the world and just thank you so very very much for joining us and letting us celebrate with you everyone if you haven't read blood air go check it out and if you have read blood air then make sure you get red tigress as well as these Rebel, I almost said Webble, these Rebel Way. <laughs> There's also a gentleman in here. I, I, naturally, I loved him. I'm convinced that he would be best friends with Ramson. He, they totally would. Oh my and God. They Anna and Lou. So oh much gosh. trouble. I know, I know we've talked about this. But. Yeah. Anna and Lou would just be like beside themselves. <laughs> I feel a special mashup happening one day, maybe. Oh, there we go. Cross maybe. Random weird crossover. But, but also yeah, an awesome make it work. crossover. Um, <laughs> but thank you so very much for joining us everybody go purchase these amazing and awesome books and we will see you all next time goodbye everybody bye bye, bye. 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 bye.